Yes, yes, of uh, Healthy Living with Marilyn. We are so glad that you could be with us tonight on this beautiful evening. And thank goodness it hasn't started raining yet. I was no. very happy about that. Yes. We got a little bit of rain earlier, but then it went away. Mm -hmm. um, but we're supposed to get some rain tomorrow. I'm not a weatherman, but um, just want to let you know, be ready for some sprinkles coming hopefully, down. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, we really need the rain. So Anyhow, uh, my name is Dr. Marilyn Scott, and I am the owner, CEO, whatever you want to call me, of Healthy Living with Marilyn. And I have my wonderful co-host who's been with me since the beginning, and I am so glad that Josie is still with us. Thank you, Josie. Yes, thank you We've for been, having me. Thank you for being my co-host. It you. has been so wonderful. We missed you last week, but Rita did a great job. I Rita know, McCullough did would, a yeah. wonderful job. We had a lot of people in last week, and it was a little bit crowded, but we all managed. That's right. And That's it was right. great. It I was missed great. being here, but I was having we a blast you. in San Antonio. I know you were. You were having yeah. such a good time in San Antonio. And, and um, this, this week, we are going to be talking about caregiving because we're all caregivers mm -hmm. in one way or another yes. and if you haven't been caregiving you might be probably will be caregiving someday in your lifetime and I have a wonderful guest who I've known for several years her name is Renee Norman and she wrote a book called a million tiny things and she's been a caregiver you were a caregiver when you were younger when you were in teens right yes mm -hmm. from 11 to 14 when my mother had cancer and died from that. Mm -hmm. And then you were a caregiver? For my father when I was about 40, 45 years old. Right. And then mm -hmm. my husband was diagnosed the day before his 50th birthday with ALS, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, which a lot of people still don't know with most neuromuscular diseases as ALS, you mm -hmm. gradually become paralyzed to the point at which you can no longer breathe. Right. Mm. So you need a great deal of care. Right. You cannot care for yourself. Mm -mm. And he died uh, 13 months later when he was 51. And then I talk mostly about him, oh, well, my experiences around mm -hmm. him and how to handle that type of terminal illness. And then my son, 10 days before the one-year anniversary of my husband dying, was almost killed in a car accident. And he had 24 surgeries in five and a half years. Wow. And a lot of my learnings come from that, but I don't discuss him in my book in order right. to preserve his privacy. Right. Mm -hmm. I just I discuss the that. learnings from that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can learn a lot from being a caregiver, oh, but yeah. what yeah. we are going to be talking about tonight is caregiving, and the caregiver needs to really learn to start taking care of mm -hmm. themselves. Yes. Because I am a product of not having taken care of myself at one time, mm -hmm. and my health went totally down the tubes. And if you can't take care of your health and you can't take care of yourself, you're not going to be any help to the person mm -hmm. that you're trying to mm -hmm. take care of. No, nope. I always think of myself as an empty vessel. I mm -hmm. have to first pour into myself pour into so I yourself. have something to pour out. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to take care of yourself. You have to learn stress release. What I did when my, I took care of my, and that, it's hard. Because, you're, so, you're so right. It's all because, about stress release. Because stress can cause oh, yeah. funky things to your body. Str friends, stress can make you sick. Yeah. It can make you sick. And I just read an article that said 90% of the people that go to the doctor, the reason why they're sick is because they're under stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I attribute my cancer diagnosis to stress. To stress. Working 18-hour days on a job and being a, a consummate people pleaser, never saying no to anyone mm -hmm. or anything. That's another thing um, caregivers really need to learn. They need to learn their boundaries. Mm -hmm. And That's I'm a big really, part of what I talk about. That is such because... <laughs> yeah. 
I am a caregiver to my two grandchildren. Sammy will be 10 months on Sunday. Mm, I can't what? believe it. Oh, my yeah. God. And he's everywhere, just everywhere. I have to be 10 steps ahead of him. If he gets 10 feet in front of me, I'm done. I am done. It's like, bye-bye, Sammy. See you later. <laughs> you know, just make it to the wall, and I'll come get you. Mm -hmm. Seriously, because mm -hmm. he is just, he just goes so fast. Oh, yeah. He goes so fast. And then... I take care of Jacob, who will be three next week, next month. I can't believe wow. it. Yeah. So they're a month apart in no. their birth dates? Their birthdays are a month, yeah, like mm -hmm. five weeks Ten apart. months and 11, okay. Yeah, my daughter and Jacob were born in August, and my son-in-law and Sammy were born in September. Oh, neat. Nice. Isn't that weird? That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and I have another daughter, Christy, who was born in September. Mm -hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have a lot of September. We have a lot of Leos. We mm. have a lot of Aquarius. I'm the only Capricorn. <laughs> so, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, that's okay. I'm special. I was going to say I'm the only Gemini, but then that just makes there, there are a lot more of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of You just Gemini. never know what you're going to get. Rita's a Gemini. No. Uh-huh, yes. Our friend Rita's a we, Gemini. We determine our birthdays are the same. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know, because we have the best birth records for royalty, They've discovered that in family lines, mm -hmm. birthdays tend to cluster. Yeah. Really? So what you just said about those months being your family, they tend to cluster. Yeah, I mean. Mm, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my sister so my, and I. My brother-in-law and my son are exactly 30 years apart. And then I have a nephew who was actually 30 years from that. So they were all born on the 27th of December, 1954, 1984, and 2014. Wow. wow. Yeah. I That's thought that was cool. really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, well, three generations of of, um, of my men. mother's birthday is February third. My son is February seventh, and my other grandson Isaac is February tenth. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then my niece, my daughter's um, daughter, is having a baby sometime in February, the beginning of February. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yep. Lineage. But I'm the only Capricorn. But it's okay. There you go. It's okay. Maybe one of my kids will have a baby born in January. Never say never. Never mm -hmm. say never. All right. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I struggle with caregiving. There are times, I remember several weeks ago, I was trying to pace myself. And I'll tell you, friends, when my grandsons, I have gotten to the point where I can put my grandsons down in the afternoon around the same time. We we read first, mm -hmm. and then I put Sammy down, and I come back down, and I lay down with, with near Jacob, and he goes to sleep, and then I go to sleep. Good. I take a nap because that is one thing that I have to do for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I could never nap until my husband was sick. Really? Mm -hmm. Yep. I was not a napper, and I felt worse when I woke up, and I just couldn't even wind down temporarily. Mm -hmm. And... When you're caring for somebody, you're up and down, particularly oh, yeah. with that, all night long. Because he couldn't, he couldn't put a cover on. He couldn't put a cover off. If he had an mm -hmm. itch, you have to move them. They can't lay in the same position all night. So I finally learned to nap. And I read an article that helped a lot. And it was drink something with caffeine. Mm -hmm. Lay down. You will go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then when you wake up, the caffeine will have gotten into you, and you feel refreshed then. Oh, wow. Well, that makes sense why coffee puts me to sleep. Coffee oh. puts you to sleep? Mm -hmm. I don't drink yeah. coffee wow. anymore. Yeah, it relaxes acidic. me. It just calms me. Yeah. Huh. Well, my whole thing is is that when I woke up, if I could fall asleep from a nap when I woke up, it was I was worse than if I'd stayed awake. Mm. I don't so like naps by, like that. Yes. Yeah, so by having the caffeine first, by, it doesn't get into your system immediately. Right. Right. It takes some time. So you get mm -hmm. your 20, 30 minute nap, whatever you mm -hmm. need. Mm -hmm. and, when, and then when I wake up, I'm okay. And yeah. it was like a whole new world to me that I could take a nap. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great because, friends, you have to learn to take some time out for yourself to keep your stress level down, meditate. I've been taking a meditation class mm -hmm. and it has really been helping me and I try to meditate in the morning and I try to meditate at night. I don't try, I do you it. Do. Mm -hmm. I really make the time. You have to make the time. There's mm -hmm. many times when you're a caregiver, you have to make the time for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
You have to. You have to take care of yourself. I've told you this before. There's no little angel that's going to tap you on the shoulder and say, mm. Hey, Marilyn, I hear you're having a rough time. Let me right. take care of you. Mm -hmm. That's not happening, is it, Joe? Mm -mm. No. No. And then don't wait until you have to be a caregiver for someone else. Right. Learn to care for yourself now. Right. Even if you've got no one that you have to that you're responsible for, if you're single, you know, but make mm -hmm. time for you and that way how you treat yourself really teaches others how to treat you too. Exactly. And the other thing you might want to do in your house or your apartment or whatever is make a little spot for you. Like if you like to read, get a bookcase and put books in there. Or if you, you know, like music Make a little area or like a little sanctuary for mm -hmm. yourself. So Mine's you can my just go chair. there. Yours is your rocking, my rocking chair. chair on the deck by my plants and my chimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. For me, it's needlepoint. Mm. It's my Valium. Is it? It's not because I'm an old lady. I've done it since I was eight years old. Oh. And that repetitive motion mm -hmm. is so calming to me. And it's I can do it in a chair sitting in a hospital. Mm -hmm. I can do it yeah, at home. It's, it's a take. It's a take along craft that you can take. Yes, you can take. So I have smaller projects riding. for out of the house, bigger projects for in the house. Mm -hmm. um, one of the symptoms of ALS is similar to Alzheimer's, so it's the same short term memory lapse. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of repetitive conversations with my husband. Mm -hmm. And if I was needle pointing. It didn't frustrate me at all. I right. could repeat the same story as many times as he needed to repeat it. Mm. It was fine. Right. It was fine. It could keep him happy, and I was happy doing my needle pointing. See, mine is knitting. Uh, I am addicted to knitting. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't been able to knit recently. Like, I took, I've taken off 10 weeks since I fell mm -hmm. because I need to take care of this is me taking care of me mm -hmm. as much as I love to knit and my husband will tell you I have not been knitting at all I put all my yarn and everything is upstairs mm -hmm. in my creative sanctuary because mm -hmm. I had to put it away mm -hmm. and because I needed to take care of myself because I was not going to have surgery on my arm and it's healing I can do mm -hmm. a lot now which I couldn't do before oh good and oh, good. Because I tore my tricep and my rotator cuff. Oh, no. Yeah. And, of course, they want to do surgery, and they wanted to do um, physical therapy, and I said, no, I'll do no. my own. No. i do my own. And that, you know, for some people, it's meditating. Mm-hmm. For me, particularly when your mind is racing about all the things you need to do as a caregiver, whether you need to do it for someone else or yourself. Mm-hmm. Mine was being confined. Mm-hmm. I had to stay there uh -huh. with my husband. He had to have someone there all the time. He could mm -hmm. not be left alone. And I did get used to being in my house. And your world gets very, very small. And then it gets to the point you're afraid to go out. Mm -hmm. And, like, even now, I operate in two-hour increments because of his medicine. It's, I have this two-hour clock. He's, he'll be gone nine years in November. Wow. I still have a two-hour clock that goes off in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so for me... Um, I had a horrific back injury when I was 17 and was told I wouldn't walk again. And one of the best things you can do for a bad back is to keep your stomach muscles strong. Mm -hmm. So I'm a crunch maniac, okay? Mm -hmm. But guess what I do? I even hide in the corner at the office. I do 25 crunches at a time. On the floor? Or yeah, sitting on, on, the the floor. Floor. on the floor. Although you can do them in a chair. If you're in, well, I'm also a little I'm bit of a germ. Going. I'm also a bit of a germ freak. So like in the hospital, I just do leg lifts in a chair. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I do push-ups against a wall because I'm not getting on the floor of a hospital. Oh, absolutely. Okay? Yeah. No, I don't blame you there. But I do that. But you can do 25 crunches. You don't get sweaty or smelly. And I do it over the course of a day as my. You know when you get that antsy whatever? Yep. Okay, I do 25 crunches, just take a deep breath. I'm good. I'm so centered, that is, I'm good to go. And I do that, and I do 100 to 200 crunches a day. On a bad day, I do even more. But so wow. that is your I got stress release. Yes. That's your stress release, yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mine is going to yoga now. I was going to ask, how's the yoga going? The yoga's going good. I didn't get to go earlier this week as much as I wanted. I had mm -hmm. a chance to spend time with my youngest daughter, Christy, and Isaac. So oh, I cool. opted to go play with them. We rode the train oh. up at Short Pump, and we had a good time. Okay. Because um, I don't get to see her as much as I would like to. But... Um, but the yoga is going good, and I can do plank, and I can do sun salutation, and, and 
I can push myself up. But what I do, this is what I do for my crunches because I have my grand boys. I put my grand, one of them, because I only can <laughs> hold one at a time. It's normally Sammy, even though he almost weighs almost as much as Jacob does. I put Sammy on my legs mm -hmm. and I hold his legs and I move my legs up and down with him on there. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's how I do my there crunches. Now, when Jacob says, oh, do me, Grandma, do me, that, would, that takes a <laughs> That takes a little bit of effort on my mm -hmm. part because he weighs almost 30 pounds and you know mm -hmm. you're you're lifting 30 pounds so yeah. but I do him for a little bit but normally Sammy gets Sammy is just so active right now he'll arch his back and he'll just roll off Ugh. so you have to be careful with that yeah, you do you know so he doesn't hurt himself yeah. because he is constantly on the move yeah um, can, can we talk about food with caregivers oh sure okay sure. I see caregivers and people in general you don't even have to be a caregiver going through stress overeat under eat eat the wrong foods eat um, on the fly eat on the fly eat emotionally that's me yeah I'm an emotional eater okay yeah. um, I eat emotionally or I need my chocolate and and then <laughs> and you need I eat as well as I can too. diet Pepsi and chocolate mm -hmm. I eat as well as I can I do crunches I walk so I can eat my chocolate okay but I also am very aware of nutrition and mm -hmm. one of the things I want to encourage people as long as you can eat them is mixed nuts I remember I came over to your house and she had a bowl of nuts Mm -hmm. on her table. I and used I, to love mixed nuts. Yeah, I can't have them out though because Jacob is allergic to peanuts. Okay, yeah. so some, I, that's why I'm saying, saying but you, know, if you have you, to... But if you don't have anybody that's allergic to peanuts because Jacob needs an EpiPen if he if, mm -hmm. yeah, that happens. Or get yeah. tree nuts where you know it's tree nuts. Right. Um, I can do almonds. Can you do almonds? I don't think he can do almonds. Okay, because yeah. I can do almonds now. Are you but, allergic to peanuts? Um, I, I became allergic to peanuts after my stem cell transplant. Oh. Because oh. I, I don't know that I'd be alive without nuts. You yeah. don't have to cook them. Right. You don't have to refrigerate them. That's right. You mm -hmm. don't have to do a thing to them. You just take them, put them in a bag, and just and I they can stay on your, uh, in a bowl on your table forever. Not only that, I always have a baggie of them in my purse wherever mm -hmm. I go. Mm -hmm. And then if you find yourself somewhere and you haven't eaten, instead of eating some junk food, mm -hmm. It's convenient because that's right. the problem. Junk mm -hmm. food's easy and convenient. Mm -hmm. No cooking involved. Mm -hmm. Right. Then I do that. My other big thing is hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep hard boiled eggs in the free in the refrigerator. I thought you can say you keep them in your purse. Yeah. <laughs> no, not my purse. That'd be too stinky. That but, would be kind of gross. <laughs> yeah. unless, unless you had one of those um, packs, you know, the thermal packs or something. Uh, that you could throw trust in. me. If you have time for that, you have time no. for something yes. even better. Mm -hmm. right. The point is the nuts are so important to keep yourself healthy. It's important to drink water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got to stay hydrated. And yeah. since you're talking about water, um, one of oh, yeah. one of my sponsors, Lisa Hazelgrove, I talked to her today. I called her. She's in Hilton Head. Nice. She's having a good time on vacation. Okay. But I said... So, Lisa, what do you want to do for your, your little commercial for a Healthy Living with Mary? She says, oh, I forgot all about it. I said, well, do you want to do the water? She says, yeah. So Perfect, because she's by the water. She And she is by the water, yeah. and she's grounding herself, and it's wonderful. Um, I'm getting ready to do that next month, too, myself, go back to the beach. Um, but anyhow, she has... Nikon, and she does Nikon, and Nikon has some great water mm -hmm. filtration systems. One of them is the waterfall, which you can put on your counter, and you put these rocks in, and you pour the water in, and it comes out of a spout. And to me, it's the consistency of silk. That's the only way I can mm -hmm. describe it. It it doesn't it doesn't have the consistency of water. It tastes mm -hmm. more silky. Like I have the big filter at home. Do you? I have for years. Yeah. Now, what is the water? What is what is the consistency of it for you? Does it sort of taste silky? Has a, a silky, little bit. Mine's yeah. an older one. Yeah, I've had it forever. It does, but it's the taste too. And the I don't know about the newer ones, but the concept is it's getting you clean water, but getting you alive water. So, mm -hmm. like there are right. trace minerals put back in that mm -hmm. are healthy for you, and then your body absorbs it, and there's a better sh cell exchange. Right, right. So it's and healthier for you. There's not any chemicals in it that no. tap water does but this is my pie mag and it has magnets in it and you fill it up to the green line here and you know you can drink it that way and it filters the water mm. so which is really good mm -hmm. so um these are great to have and um 
Our brain is 75% water. Did you know that? No, I just yeah, knew we were yeah. like 98% water. And it regulates your fast. body temperature, keeps your skin looking. I mm -hmm. mean, if you don't like water, start like a water because you will not have wrinkles. Well, mm -hmm. it will really hydrate your skin a lot. Not only that, a lot of people feel tired. It's right. actually dehydration. dehydration. You need to drink mm -hmm. water. Right. Often you feel hungry. You mm -hmm. actually need to You're drink thirsty. water. Mm -hmm. Yep. It protects your heart. It uh, burns fat. Every That's cell, what I'm in, every on. cell and organ of the body requires water. That's right. I mean, we are a cosmos of the earth. You know, we're we're that seventy eight percent or seventy five percent, just like the earth. Right. So you know, we're a lot of water. Um, it, it decreases it decreases fatigue and it mm -hmm. helps oxygenate the the cells. And the one big thing that I like, it flushes toxins out, out of, the body. of mm -hmm. your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it helps you control calorie intake. I try to drink water before I eat. Mm -hmm. I like to drink water. I'd like to drink water when I'm eating, and I know you're not supposed to do that. And I've been working on this for a long time, but it's like, other than my weight, that's my Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. And so I try to drink water before because it fills you up mm -hmm. before you eat. And then it, you look, and it's like, oh, my eyes are bigger than my stomach, and I don't need to have all this this food so water is very important so if you want to get in touch with lisa you can get in touch with her um look at her facebook page it's facebook.com slash lisa healthy or you can look at her nikon um her nikon um, page is nikon.com slash lisa healthy or she has her um, website which is www.lisahealthy.com so she's she does a lot of other things but mm -hmm. um, she's really a proponent in good health because her health faltered a long time ago too mm -hmm. I think a, one of the reasons why we all get into health care into and what so we do is because we, we had issues call. before we got mm -hmm. a wake-up call like wake Josie call. you yeah. had cancer Mm -hmm. You know, and three you times. three times, mm -hmm. and you went through a lot of caregiving. Mm -hmm. I've been through. I a lot blew of out caregiving. my knee lifting, Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have surgery? No. Shh. No. Yeah, we don't talk. But that's okay. You I'm not videos. doing it either. I'm, <laughs> I'm not, not doing, doing it. it. I'm exercising uh -huh. instead. That's what I do. That's yeah. what I do. So um, I think a lot of caregivers. I got into being a digestive enzyme specialist because. I had digestive issues, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be able to take care of myself so I could take care of other people. Mm -hmm. And you wrote this book to help people with caregiving. Yeah, because you're thrown into it. Right. You go to a doctor, you're not feeling real good or something's a little odd, and you get this bizarre diagnosis and it, it almost feels like you're in the twilight zone, mm -hmm. and, it's like, uh -huh. and it's a dream. and some of it's going in slow motion and some of it's going in fast forward mm -hmm. and my one of my main recommendations is uh and right now all the back to school stuff is in the stores you can get notebooks for 25 cents yep okay mm -hmm. they ha they're having a big sale at staples or something they all Office, are right they now all they are. all are penny, and so penny, penny sales in fact somehow i came in without a notebook today but i always have a notebook and write everything down you mm -hmm. don't know how stress is affecting you you don't know what you're hearing. You don't know what you're not hearing. Um, so, like, I addressed a lot of logistics. And mm -hmm. you know what? That's the easy part. But you've got a roadmap here. You've got a roadmap through my website, which is a milliontinythings.com, because you don't do anything big in a day. You just do a million tiny things. And this is her book. Michael, can you zero in on, on her book for us? Okay. Okay. That would be good. Can you see it? That's good Thank because you. your light is in my eyes, so I can't really see it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, you know, so logistics, and if you can seriously follow the directions of all these incredible medical professionals that have dedicated their lives to this, and mm -hmm. you have this incredible opportunity of meeting these amazing people who, who are giving of themselves every day for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I found, so if I could follow directions, I could write everything down, mm -hmm. um, write out your questions when you're at home, um, I also give some appendixes or help, uh, what do I call them? Helpful organizers. Mm -hmm. If you can write down your symptoms and keep track of your medicines, and you bring that to a doctor, they can look at that pattern and identify what's going on with you pretty doggone quickly. And right. they can spend time then on figuring out the right treatment instead of trying to figure out what's going on. 
So you can, you, logistically, you can handle this. You have hospice who's helped many people we know. Right. Give you road, go, give you road map. I, I couldn't have done it without hospice. Um, and I'm going to get to something they told me I wish I'd known earlier on. First of all, get into hospice as soon as you can. It's not a death sentence. It's a quality of life for your whole family, not right. just your loved one. But what I found was the tough part was what I call the emotional effect. Mm -hmm. You're dealing with your emotions, your loved one emotions, your <coughs> family's emotions, and every person you come in contact with. Mm -hmm. And that's where the boundaries come in. You have to learn to establish boundaries so other people's emotions, fears, beliefs do don't, not Don't come. get into your energy. Right. Let Be very clear on what your energy and what your boundaries are, and don't let other people's drama pile on yours right you got to keep it away and I'm going to give you a great example and this is also something I learned to do to say no had a wonderful neighbor I'm always walking dogs if you saw the dogs on the cover of my she book she has a huge dog it's called a Bernese mountain dog it's humongous but he is so cute <laughs> so cute so lovable but he like comes up to my shoulder yes and he's he gets, humongous he gets showered every other week because he's a lap dog and doesn't know he's big yeah but the thing is is that I saw, I had one neighbor, I saw her a lot whenever I walked, and I love seeing her. And it's, hi, how are you? And you keep walking, right? So when my husband was diagnosed and she'd heard, she started calling me. And it was like, oh, Renee, yes. how are you? I don't know how you're doing it. Mm. Okay, so let me give you an example of a boundary. Hi, neighbor, it's so great to hear from you. Today, I need to hear, I, you, you will know this. I always mm -hmm. ask, what's new, thrilling, and exciting? Today, tell me what's new, thrilling, and exciting. I don't have the luxury of getting upset. I need to hear something new, thrilling, and exciting. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Thank you so much. I don't have the luxury of getting upset today. I need you to tell me something new, thrilling, and exciting. But, you know, we all know those drama queens mm -hmm. that can't let a good drama go by. They've yeah. got to jump on board, oh right? Gosh, no. So they're going to still go in with the drama. And that's your pull up. You've already announced your style, mm -hmm. it's called. You've announced your boundaries, mm -hmm. and that's when you say, thank you so much for calling. Do me a favor. Find something new, thrilling, exciting to call me with. And then call me and back. And then call me back in a week or two when you have something. <laughs> and they don't. And, and I'm hear not from her ever again. <laughs> no, you won't. But you would have stopped the drama, and mm -hmm. you don't have that, oh, sorry, you don't have that energy to give. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right. no longer are you going to do that. And no longer will that person call and drain your energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a really important thing. And if you have children, you have to protect them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I had in here was a bunch of the emails I was sending to school because my children would get to school and a teacher would say, oh, how's your father doing? Okay, let's go into calculus now. Okay, now how is that child supposed to concentrate on whatever the subject yeah. is? I couldn't as an adult. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was calling, I was sending emails with updates and reminding them, please do not ask my children about their father. Let them have a few hours of the day that they have a normal life. Normal life. life. Let them be a child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let them play and be happy. You're allowed to be happy. Mm -hmm. All emotions are good. All emotions are appropriate. Let them them be happy mm -hmm. and don't bring them down and um, I had to call the principal here and there and say I'm sorry this teacher just continues to, to ask about the dad please explain to them we understand and appreciate their concern however it's not appropriate when they're going into class when you and I were talking on the phone earlier today I guess it was or last yesterday when you called and yeah. The one thing that you wanted to talk about was when you are caring for a loved one and they lash out at you. Yes, very important. That is important. a very mm -hmm. difficult thing. Yeah. So okay. how do you how do you suggest to handle that? Okay. First thing people need to know is what is anger. Okay. Think about the last time you're driving, and you're <laughs> driving along. You're not on the phone. You're not playing with the radio. You're not eating. You're not putting on lipstick. Okay, you're driving along and you're actually paying attention to the road. Somebody pulls out in front of you. You slam on your brakes, you avoid the accident, and it's all a response, and your adrenaline kicks in, okay? What's your next response? Oh, you get angry. You get angry. Mm -hmm. They should have to take an IQ test. Learn to drive. Get off the phone. Don't put my life in jeopardy because you're on the road. Okay, 
fear is a survival instinct mm -hmm. that our bodies do, and it is fight or fight. flight. Mm -hmm. We secrete adrenaline, and a mm -hmm. whole bunch of chemicals happen real quickly, which you could answer better than I could. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And what happens is it's a flash in the pan, and your body is spent. And the long-term manifestation of fear is anger. So when you're dealing with a loved one who's angry, it's mm -hmm. because they're afraid. afraid. Mm -hmm. And you cannot live in fear, biologically speaking. Mm -hmm. You can live in anger. Your mm -hmm. body can live in anger. So it's coming out <coughs> as anger. The reason why it's coming out at you is take it as a compliment. It's because you are the one they know that will be there no matter what. And you they can are depend the safe, on you. Yes, you You're are the safe person. Right. You're the safe person. And sometimes they just snap. So the best thing you can do is n name it. And the way you name it without being threatening is you start your sentences, and I practice in the shower. I need, I want, I feel. I feel that there's some fear going on here or you're afraid of something. I need you to share with me what you're afraid of. Right. In my husband's case, there's a stage at which everybody with ALS pretty much loses the ability to speak. And he was ter terrified because he couldn't, wouldn't be able to move, that he wouldn't be able to tell me what he needed or wanted. And so we practiced. So when he could speak, instead of having him speak all the time, we practice. And I say, okay, honey, you look uncomfortable. Would you like me to change your position? Yes. And so we practiced his body language or when he tried to move, um, just even timing, knowing it had been a while since he had a sip of water, mm -hmm. um, doing all that. That took away fear for him. Because he knew that even if he couldn't talk or communicate to me verbally, that I would still be able to pick up on what he needed and wanted. That was my greatest fear, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I've worked with people who I was telling you about before who couldn't move, couldn't speak, were on life support, and were so communicative with their eyes it wasn't even funny. Oh, yeah. There was no doubt to me what they wanted. So... That's a really important thing to address, and it goes for you too. For you too. If you're in fear mm -hmm. and you find yourself getting angry, go to your meditation, go to your walk, go to your crunches, go to your chocolate. Or go to your pastor, go to go somebody to your pastor, that you can trust to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And try to figure out Brainstorm. what you're afraid right. of. Mm -hmm. And you may not even want to know what you're afraid of. You may be so afraid to learn what you're afraid of. And that is the tough part. And I see anger in every single caregiving experience. Mm -hmm. I see it with every loved one coming out at the person who's most important to them. So years ago, Joan Rivers was commenting on a dog humping your leg and saying, take it as a compliment. So when your loved one's angry at you, learn to take it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. And one of the important things is on a good day, the reason why I knew how to care for my husband on the bad days as we talked about it on the good days. Right. Mm -hmm. And you touch, touched on it earlier about taking care of yourself. Right. After going through this experience, the most important gift you can give the people who will be caring for you is the knowledge of what you do and don't want and having an advanced medical directive. Mm -hmm. Okay? You're not going to get sick and die because you did the paperwork. In right. fact, I believe yeah. the opposite. I believe if you do the paperwork, yeah, you you're not going to need it. Right. Okay? Yeah, it's, of... It takes away the stress. Yeah. And one of the things I stumbled across with your adult children, of course, you'll say, I really want to talk about what I do and don't want. Mm -hmm. Oh, mom, you're fine. Oh, mom, no, 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 you're going to live forever. Please, you're going to outlive me. I know. I okay? Know. Let me tell you right now, you give them this choice. Your choice is to either talk about what's important to me, what I do and don't want, right. or I'm happy to tell you all about the night you were conceived. Your choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I have yet to have a bad response to that. 
I have had more people call me or email me, and most of it's through email afterwards, and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We had the best conversation. That's great. Yeah, yeah and the other thing about caregiving, a lot of people feel that as a caregiver, and I went through this too, and you probably did too, and you probably did, Josie, you feel you're the only one going through this. It's a very lonely, it be, isolated position. It can position. be very isolated. So when I was taking care of my dad and basically working 22 hours a day to take care of him, mm -hmm. go home to my mom's, take a shower, get something to eat, and come back, the way that I got through the stress and the way that I handled it was I wrote, I journaled. Mm -hmm. And I wrote out I, 13 notebooks why Chris was sick. I wrote poems because my dad liked poems. So mm -hmm. I wrote this poem, and I want to read it to everybody. It's called, I'm There For You. And I wrote this several years ago mm. when I was going through a difficult time and I wasn't getting any help. And mm -hmm. the only help I was getting was from up above, mm -hmm. from God. So I wrote this poem, and I want... I want you caregivers to realize this, that um, you are not alone. You are really not alone. There's a bunch of us out there. But I, want, I wrote this. I want to read it to you. I haven't read this for a couple years, and I got okay. it out because it's going to be in my book. Whenever you feel lonely, I am there for you. Whenever you feel afraid, I am there for you. When you feel nobody cares, I am there for you. And when you feel totally lost... I am there for you. And when you feel there is no end, I am there for you. And when you feel that no one understands, I am there for you. And when you need to cry, I am there for you. And I will always be there for you whenever you need me. Mm, that's precious. That's beautiful. And you know Thank what you. I learned? What? That's the blessing. Mm-hmm is that you get to be there for the person. That's mm -hmm. right. The experience you share on that path, mm -hmm. it's like none other. My aunt, yeah. in uh, the, the, on May 31st, she had a major stroke, and she's living with my mother now. Mm -hmm. And she went to the hospital, and she had a very major stroke, and then she had to go to rehab. My mother called me up one day, and she says, Marilyn, what am I going to do? I said, what do you mean, what are you going to do? She's <laughs> living with you. You always said that she was your legs and you were her eyes. So you're, you're going to have to take care of her and people will come in and work with her. And um, you'll be able to do what you're doing probably. But unfortunately she got to the, well, what about me? What about me? And I said to her, I said, when I was taking care of you, when I was taking care of grandma, and when I was taking care of dad, and I was taking care of some of my clients, I dropped everything. And sometimes you have to drop everything mm -hmm. in order to help somebody. But when you do that, you do it in a loving way. And my mother's doing really good now. Mm -hmm. Now I talk to her every day. And a lot of times she goes into these long dissertations, which is fine because mm -hmm. don't complain about your mother calling you or anything <coughs> because you have one. Thank you. You had one. You have one. Yeah, if I you haven't had, had one, one for a long time. See, you haven't had one. Yours is fine. <coughs> I'm blessed. I still have my mother. She's 88 years old. So be thankful when your mother calls mm -hmm. um, and listen to her. Just listen. And when you have to get off the phone, like earlier today, I had to get off the phone because the kids were screaming. Mm -hmm. So it's like, listen. That's part of caregiving. If you're my, my mom lives eight hours from me, and there's no easy way to get there. And I listen to her on the phone, and that's the best gift that I can mm -hmm. give her every day mm -hmm. is my ears, my hearing, listening. So if, you have, you know, if somebody's calling you and they need to talk, give them ten minutes. And say after that, if you have to leave, you know, if you can't stay on the phone, tell them you'll call them back or you just have, have to get off. Put a limitation on it if you have to because sometimes it can be a very long conversation and mm -hmm. time you don't get back. So do something for you. Then after you get off the phone, do something for you, whether it's make yourself a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Sit down for a few minutes. What I did after the boys left, I went into... Um, into my bedroom, I have a huge bedroom, into my bedroom and sat on the lounge chair and just sat there and meditated for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
And that's like having a two-hour nap. And mm -hmm. I already had a 15 or 20-minute nap this afternoon. So mm -hmm. Her asking you, um, though, what about me, was probably her experience in seeing you be able to go through it and you being okay. So she didn't know how you were able to do that. So her what about me may not have been a selfish what about me, mm, but how well, did you do that that you made it through and how do I do this? It could oh. be. Mm -hmm. It could be. The other thing is she could have been honestly overwhelmed. Yeah. Oh, Let me tell you, she just was. because I wrote a book and I speak on caregiving mm -hmm. and I'm still standing, yeah. it doesn't mean that oh, I didn't no. have my tough moments. Mm -mm. It we I all have, you will right. all have tough moments. Yeah. All of you will have tough moments. Tough moments. You will feel overwhelmed. And you will feel alone. But mm -hmm. remember, there's a bunch of us out there. You can always email me at healthylivingwithmarilyn2017 at Gmail. You can and always email me. You can always get in touch with Renee. What's yep. your email address, Renee? Uh, info at a million tiny things dot com or go to the website a million tiny things dot com. Right. You and can email click, her through that. Mm -hmm. Click Contact on that. Contact her. How can she? E how can people email you? Josiehopkins dot com. There you go. J o s i h o p k i n s dot com. You can email me oh, through at gmail dot com. Yeah. Right, and you can email me through Healthy Living, mm -hmm. Healthy Living mm -hmm. with Marilyn dot com. My website. Don't think you're alone. There are six over yeah. sixty five million. Americans mm -hmm. out there who are caregivers. Yeah, now, I'm a caregiver to my grandchildren, but mm -hmm. I'm a long-distance caregiver. That can be a challenge. Mm -hmm. And out of the three of us here, it's one in three adults in the United States that are an unpaid caregiver. So anytime you're... And we're all unpaid, so all yeah. three out of three. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah. I mean, anytime you're around two other people, one of you statistically is an unpaid caregiver. Mm -hmm. It is, right. and it's only going to get worse with the baby boomers aging. Yeah. Um, so every elder in my family, I was a caregiver because uh -huh. I was of a, uh, my parents were in their late 40s when I was born. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of my elders were, you know, older, were, older. Yeah. were older. So what? every aunt, yeah. every uncle, every mom, my mom, dad. Yeah. And mother. I always turn it. I always turn it that, okay, when I'm exhausted and I'm hurting because I've, my, my husband was six foot one and a half, 224 pounds. Mm. And, and I'm not that petite, but that's a lot of dead that weight is. to have mm -hmm. to move and, and you're everything. Tall. I'm 5'9". Yeah, she's tall. Yeah, so I mean, I have leverage going for me here. Right. It's still when you're when he literally can't move and it's dead weight. Just think of a child who's dead weight compared to an adult. So there were times I was tired. Mm -hmm. I was hurting. Mm -hmm. I was overwhelmed. I still had two children I was raising. I was right. the only driver in the family. Mm -hmm. I was driving an hour and a half away for medical appointments twice a week for my husband. But guess what? I just stopped and thought for a minute and I thought wow thank you God a blessing yeah I'm in a position that I can do this mm -hmm. for my husband mm -hmm. I can do this for my kids I can do this for my father I can do this for my son I can do this for family friends mm -hmm. I just helped another friend through a horrific situation um, who lost her husband so boy thank you mm -hmm. I can do this Mm -hmm. And when you come back to a place of gratitude and being grateful that right. you that you can do it, and yeah, you've got to learn to ask for some help and get over your ego and your pride. Right. Mm -hmm. And oh, hospice. Yeah. I didn't learn about this till hospice came in. I wish I knew about this in the beginning. You know, when somebody's diagnosed and you get flooded with people, oh, let me know what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you're fine. You're overwhelmed yourself. They have something called a sunshine list, mm -hmm. and you write down on the list things that would be very helpful if someone did for you. <clears throat> and I loved it because I don't like to ask for help. Yeah. So this way you can <laughs> show somebody the list when they ask, and they can choose something they would love to do for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of, like, um, if somebody said, oh, I'd love my flower boxes planted, I'd be like, oh, you're really kidding me here. Your husband's dying. You want flower boxes planted? But, you know, we sat on the deck yeah. all the time. And in case you can't tell, I'm a little type A. So when we were sitting out there and the flower boxes didn't have flowers in them, instead of enjoying the husband, I had, the time I had with my I'm husband, I was looking life. at <laughs> the flower boxes that because of the path that life had brought us down, I didn't have the capacity, to the capability to right. do the flower boxes. And one of my friends who I knew through our children, turns out she loves to, to plant flowers in the garden. Mm. So she was thrilled to plant my flower boxes because it was something important to well, her. that's another thing. When you are caregiving and you need help, ask for help. You need to get a break. 
-hmm. If you're doing caregiving 24 seven or taking mm -hmm. care of a loved one in palliative care, which is end of life care, mm -hmm. I've done that for several people. I've even done that for clients of mine. Mm -hmm. You need to ask for help. You can't do it 24-7. No. It will drain you down in a matter of moments. And another thing that um, I want to tell you about, because I've been doing a lot of caregiving myself, and the one thing that I have been doing is doing some energy work. Mm -hmm. Having somebody do some energy work on me. And this is not woo-woo or anything. This is something that can really help rejuvenate mm -hmm. your system. And I just wanted to say that one of my... Um, one of my dear colleagues, she, her name is Rosemary Prophet, and she doesn't live too far from me. It's mm -hmm. like 12 minutes. But she has, a, she has a business called Good For You Therapy, Good For You Energy Therapy, and she is amazing. She's very soft-spoken. She knows what she's talking about. She can get you into a relaxed state. Mm -hmm. It is affordable. And if you want to get in touch with her, you can reach her at her website, Good For You Therapy, LLC. Um, she's a third certified health healing touch practitioner, but she is so good at what she does. So if you don't live in the area where we live in Richmond, Virginia, find an energy healer in your area that is good, that can help rejuvenate yourself. Would she be really able to important. find good practitioners in other states for people? She might. I, I could ask her. Here is her. Can you zero in on this, Michael, her, um, her brochure here? She's going to be at our retreat. She's, she, awesome. is, she is going to do a program at our retreat, Creating the Amazing You, um, and she's going to be working with us. So I'm really excited awesome. about that. Good. But she's... she's She's like an angel. She really is. She's very soft-spoken. She's sweet. And she really knows mm -hmm. what she's doing. And she can put you in a very good spot where you are feeling better. And you'll, you'll notice that you're feeling better. You'll notice you're out of pain. I've been going to her for my arm, you know, and for the energy. Because when you fall and hurt yourself, your chakras are blocked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there are chakras that are blocked. And she can tell which ones are and which ones ones aren't so she's amazing so um if you need somebody that for some energy help to get relaxed and you don't want to go get a massage she does it clothed and she puts this real nice warm fuzzy blanket on you it's awesome <laughs> oh that sounds nice. oh it really is she puts pillows under your legs i mean it's terrific so, so at the retreat can, when is you guys uh, my retreat um is called creating the amazing you I've been putting it on Facebook and putting it on, here's this. I keep getting Michael to get up and stand up and do these. <laughs> but Michael, you know he's going to put it all back on yeah. the Facebook okay. page. So um, be here. And our retreat is going to be October 13th, 14th, and 15th. We're, we've decided to redo our website because I was talking, I met with Judy a couple nights ago, and she says, Marilyn, why did you want to do this? And somebody had asked me earlier because I went to an acupuncturist, and she said, Marilyn, with all the adversity that you've been through with all your life, how did you manage to do a TV show and do a radio show and, and work on your book and do a lot of things on Facebook and LinkedIn and social media? How did you manage to get out there? And I said, That's one of... Pardon me? I said because it's therapeutic. It's no, it <laughs> is therapeutic. But the other thing is there is no box, and that's why I flew. But the main thing is people told me I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was the naysayers. And it was before that because I was always brought up. I, my dad was very critical of me. My ex-husband was very critical of me. I could not please him to for anything, and I finally have a husband that is really, really wonderful, and we'll be married 10 years. I'm so excited about that. And it was people saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I managed to say, mm -mm, yes, I, can. I am rising above. And the three main words that you have to remember is, yes, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. can because you can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why we're doing this, this creating the amazing you, to show people, and it's just not women, it's men, whoever mm -hmm. wants to come, show people that you can do it. You can become amazing, and we're going to help you transform 
and you will go home feeling a totally different person on Sunday. So if you want to sign up, look at our website, creatingtheamazingyou.com, or call me. My, my email's there. You can get in touch with me at top priority LLC at Gmail. I get a lot of Gmail accounts and stuff. Um, I was going to say, that's one I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Huh? I don't remember that one. Oh, well, that's my business, Top Priority LLC. Okay. Do you know why? I always wanted a business called Top Priority, and the reason why is because I want everybody's life to have, be their top priority. Ah, I mm -hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, Josie, what are you doing? What are you doing? So, um, I, I will be back on the air with um, Josie's Inspiration on Blog Talk Radio on Tuesday, and I am reinserting myself back into my life post vacation and post um, damsel conference so just re getting everything back in order business is going damsel in defense um, to defend her dot com and my sole purpose business I'm doing some pampering events this weekend that's great and it's a kickoff weekend for national night out so I'll be at the Target store in Forest Hill with damsel in defense on Saturday morning from 10 to 2 Okay, now where is that on Forest Hill? It's it's off Forest of, Hill. It's right off of the interstate. Um, is it off of Chippenham too? Yeah. Right off of Chippenham. Okay. Um, the Target store. It's between. Um, well, it's on Forest Hill. Yeah, it's on as you're going mm -hmm. up Forest Hill. It's on the right. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of near Sheila Lane, near mm -hmm. um, Walmart. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so you'll be there. I'll from be there from ten to, 10 to 2, two on Saturday for the police um, community national kickoff for national night out so that'll be saturday because national night out is the following week oh mm -hmm. is it mm -hmm. and what is national night out national night out is when communities come together um... turn your porch lights on um... to it's really about fighting crime and communities mm -hmm. coming together mm -hmm. and being visible and making sure that they're supporting each other that's good Mm -hmm. So go see Josie. Thank you, Josie, for telling me that. And mm -hmm. um, Judy and I will be working on our website, but maybe yeah. we will go come over to see you Happy when people. we have a brain freeze and we have to get out and do <laughs> something for ourselves. Because, friends, you will get brain freeze when you are caregiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will get run down when you are caregiving. Go get yourself some nuts in, in your kitchen. Make sure you have a bag of nuts. That, I think that's a great thing. Energy for It's well, a great it's, energy thing. It's healthy for you. It's healthy. Mm -hmm. And, and don't it's good and brain eat. food. Mm -hmm. It's great brain food. Yeah. Great brain food. And don't think of those cashews being fattening. They're not fattening. They're helping you out. Yeah, well, that's good. Too. I love and cashews. The other thing that we didn't talk about a whole lot, that if I can add in real quick, sure, go ahead. is routine. Routine. Yep. Okay. What you were saying about your meditating, what you, you you do it morning and night, it is part of your routine. Now. When you're a caregiver, sometimes you have to write out a schedule and write right. out a routine mm -hmm. so that you can do it. So if there's a yoga class you want to go to Wednesdays at 4 o'clock, you're going to have a routine and you're going to have maybe a group of friends that between them, they arrange who's coming that every Wednesday and they're going to let you know the day before. So they're going to come at 3.30 so you don't have to write, or maybe even 3. Sometimes you need a transition period with your loved one right. that they're comfortable. Okay, so you don't have to rush, and if you get there early, you get to actually sit down a minute for yourself before yoga. Um, the uh, retreat you're doing. Right. If, if you don't ask for help, you're not going. If you don't have a routine, you're not going. Mm, that's right. Okay? You You've have got to, prepare, to put it on you your have plan. To schedule it. Put it on your calendar. Yes. Put it on your calendar, August, October 13th, 14th, and 15th. It's at the Hyatt Place up at Short Pump. Put it on your calendar. $50 deposit to hold your spot. That's all you it's need. It's only three months mm -hmm. away. It's three months away. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I found about routine is it helped me and it helped my husband because we knew what was coming. With an illness, you don't know what's coming. Right. But you can control your routine. And it was a source mm -hmm. of comfort. It also meant less decisions in a day. That's mm -hmm. right. You have so many decisions over the course of a day. Okay, so I encourage people to write things down, go with a routine, and in that routine, build some time for yourself. And there may be some weeks it falls apart, but hopefully 80, 90% of the time, it'll work. You know, I have a routine with the boys, and it took me a long time to develop this routine with the boys, mm -hmm. that they would be taking a nap at the same time in the afternoon. That was my biggest goal. Practice makes perfect. Exactly. Yep. And... When when Sammy was an infant, he was so, so utterly 
high maintenance. Zen calls them high maintenance. And Jacob wasn't that high maintenance at the time when he was an infant. Um, Jacob had one of those webinars that you could put in his mouth, and he was happy with that. Oh. Sammy, no, <laughs> he wasn't interested in that at all. So he was really high maintenance. And to try to get them down for now, and just to get to learn the, the Sammy, mm -hmm. just to get to learn him, to yeah. get to know him. That's another thing. When you are taking care of somebody, if you don't know them or if you know, even if you, you know them, them if they're a relative of yours, their personality sometimes change because mm -hmm. when they don't feel good and they're in pain, they can get grouchy, right? Yep. And that was another thing that was kind of tough, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, let's face facts, we all have parts of ourselves that we work hard to improve each and every day. Right. And when you don't feel good, sometimes you can't hide those parts from other mm -hmm. people. Right. And sometimes your ugly side comes out. Mm -hmm. And so when you're caring for your loved one, the parts of them that they normally can control that they don't want anyone to see. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like there are parts of me I don't want anyone to see. Uh -huh. They do come out, and they're going to come out at you because you're the one they trust. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if they are lashing out at you or upset, don't mm -hmm. take it personally. No. It's their package for the moment. <coughs> it's not really how they are. But when you're in pain, you're grouchy. Let's it's, be honest. It's not the you can essence. be tired, too. Right. It's not the essence of who they are. No. Mm -hmm. It's just like when that car pulled out in front of us before, and right. afterwards we were like, who is that crazy person? Get a, get, you know, take an IQ test. That's not who the essence of who no. we are is. Mm -mm. And it's the same thing. Do you know what I do with, with that? Because... I try not to let other people control my emotions. And that, True. when somebody mm -hmm. does that, they are controlling your emotions. They don't mm -hmm. know it, but they are. And I decide when something like that happens, I might say, oh, my goodness, I do that now. I used mm -hmm. to yell and stuff, but I don't do that anymore, <laughs> especially if the kids are in the car. You know, they're very, yeah. mm -hmm. they pick up I just things. say thank you because I'm safe. Right, because mm -hmm. I'm safe. I'm and safe. I just thank let you. it go. You mm -hmm. need to learn to let it go because don't let them control your emotions. <laughs> don't let that person who pulls out in front of you or whatever upset you for the rest of the day. Don't let your loved one now. upset you for mm -hmm. the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. be, be more mindful of that. Don't let, if a nurse comes in or something, if you've got hospice in the hospital, don't let that nurse upset you. You know, you are there to help, lovingly help somebody else. When you just said hospice, I forgot about this with your... Um retreat yeah depending on what stage of illness you're in and all they actually have respite care mm -hmm. they do mm -hmm. and here we have an amazing facility i don't know if you know about it in um i think it's technically richmond robius road old bonaire road mm -hmm. it's i think bon secours hospice house mm -hmm. it's behind total wine mm -hmm. and what an amazing facility it's about a year old maybe two years old now Mm -hmm. amazing facility so and check you know check these places out yep and then the other thing to consider real quick because I know we're running out of time and all is we're getting near the end of the year if you've met your medical deductible go schedule you as the caregiver go schedule your own doctor's appointments it's not going to cost you a thing right go take care of, of yourself you. get your appointment scheduled now before year end it's something i always post in about september because mm -hmm. there's a transition time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. make sure you're taking care of yourself get yourself to the dentist right take care of yourself mm -hmm. thank you so much for being i really appreciate it there's a couple more things that i want to tell everybody about i am on the cover of journey to wellness hey. Um, I, you can get the magazine online, um, and I will put it out there to let people know I've had it on Facebook before. Wonderful. Um, I think, Josie, your picture's in there with me. Um, there's a couple others. Um, Shanice is there in there with me. Oh, nice. Yeah, and Judy's there. So um, there's, there's several pictures of me with other people in there. Um, it's an article about me. Um, what I do, and it asks about creating the amazing you. So if anybody has any questions about my retreat, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Um, and I'm going to try to get a couple copies of that myself. And you're in National, um, national and, Awakening. Yeah, and I am in National Awakenings. Natural Awakening. Natural Ooh. Awakenings on mm -hmm. page 10 and a couple other pages in there. And Judy and I have an uh, our, our business card in there. And there's an, a small article in there on my show, my TV show. So um, I'm really excited okay. about that. So anyhow, here we go. 
Thank you so much, Renee, for your time and your energy tonight. Well, thank you for having me. It was great. And if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to get in contact with us. We will see you soon. Change your life today. We love you guys. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.